another Doctor Who book review for you all today, but it was probably not the one you're expecting. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Doctor Who paper dolls, where you can make some paper dolls. Surprise, surprise. This is a rather unusual release this time round, because I decided to do something a little bit different. It's nearly the end of summer, I'm having a little bit of a crisis at the moment, so I thought that this would be a brilliant way to fix it, by cutting out some small pieces of paper that resemble vaguely the people from our favourite science fiction TV show. I will be doing a few more book reviews in the future, I in fact think that I have a few more activity books hidden away somewhere, so if this video does quite well, I may delve back into the 10th Doctor and 11th Doctor era of activity books at some point, but but yeah, for now, we're just going with this one, and there'll be a few more other book reviews probably in the future. So as you can see at the very front, it's a rather nice design, to be honest. We get Doctor Who at the front, paper dolls in big letters, just in case you are very confused. Then it also includes 26 characters and some cosplay tips by Crystal D, of course, who does the fan show. So we've got a few things around the side. What I really like to see is we have a few designs of different Doctors. As you can see, we get classic Doctors in here, new series Doctors, and new series companions as well. To be quite honest, it's a rather unusual release, because you would think that there would be aimed at children, but really it's also aimed at new series people and classic series people, so it's a little bit of an unusual audience for this one, I imagine, maybe a little bit of an interest for some other people as well, so as you can see we get the fourth Doctor up here, the first Doctor from the Reign of Terror, and what I like to see is we also have a few little facts along the side as well, such as this one at the top that says, one for the Sherlock Holmes themed Talons of Wen Chiang in 1977, a very good story, but yeah, generally it's a very nice layout, we have Colin at the side, yay, then of course on the back we get a little bit more information once again, a few more companions. We have Rose there, Ace there, along with a little bit of information about the book itself, along with the people that should be credited. So I'll let you have a look at that. We, of course, have Simon Gurrier, a big Finnish writer. I do believe that he's the creator of Grace, as far as I can remember. And then we also have Ben Morris, who I do believe is the illustrator, and then as well, Crystal D. So I think that Ben Morris has done a little bit for Doctor Who in the past. Something's ringing a bell when I say that he did a little bit of cartoon work for Doctor Who Adventures, which now no longer exists. But taking a look on the inside, it is one of those books where you get it and it is pretty much one of those ones that by the end it is expected to be completely ripped up which to start with isn't exactly my favourite type of book. I definitely prefer to have a book that I can actually keep rather than one that is going to be completely ripped up. However I imagine for a child audience it's something that they don't particularly mind about too much. So as you can see at the very front here we get a rather nice image once again seeing Doctor Who Paper Dolls and we get a lot of different companions and doctors around the side. A very nice graphic on the front there along with Paper Dolls printed once again and then we go into the contents where we have all of the doctors listed apart from the War Doctor just to note on that because I've got a feeling the reason why they haven't included him is because he didn't really have too much variation in costume on the TV show itself meaning that you can't really do the paper doll aspect with him so that's no doubt why they've left him out it may be nice to see a little bit in here with him in just to sort of give it a little bit of a completed feel but yeah he's not in this one unfortunately and as I say we get all the doctors down here and then we get a lot of the companions as well which I'll be taking a look at in a little bit on the first page of information we do get a little bit of introduction about the paper dolls themselves and how there's 26 with many different costume variations, in fact over 50 different outfit variations that you can have, and then we have a little bit of general information about the TV show itself, of course you go straight into an introduction into cosplay by Crystal. Now, cosplay is not exactly my thing, I know it's a thing that a lot of people like when they go to conventions and stuff like that, so I can imagine this will be a lot of help for them, so we have a little bit of um, tips and things about borrowing, going to charity shops for stuff where you can go and get different sort of things that you can have on your costumes using the internet, probably one of the biggest ways to cosplay these days. See other things as well about different accessories and stuff. So as I say, if you are somebody who likes cosplaying, I can imagine that this will probably be something of interest to you. First page now where we start going on to the actual doctors that you can cut out. This is the main idea and the main layout for the general release. So of course we start off with the first doctor. Have a little bit of information at the top there just to get a little bit of a close up on that. So Anna Earthly Child 1963 with costume designed by Maureen Hegan. Then we have a few other bits of information as well for the other costumes that are reflected on the opposite side of the page and that I really like. I really like the way that we have the different designers and stuff like that. It would be nice if we actually could go into the different costumes and how they were made, maybe even giving a few photos from the TV show itself rather than just the illustrated versions because I think it may have been nice to see on this page here, although that of course when you get onto the later characters this is technically the back of the other one, it would have been nice to maybe see a sheet of paper between each character that had a little bit of a profile about that character, the costume, say as I say, who designed 
designed it much like how it is up here but in a lot more detail and generally just a few pictures and stuff of how it came to be and then by the end when you sort of constructed all of the characters together you sort of have a little bit of a portfolio of different companions and characters from the TV show rather than literally just cut out figures. I don't know that's just something for me but that said I could imagine that if they did start to do that it would start going into the territory of a book for an older audience with having a lot of writing and stuff like that. However they have sort of gone into that as you can see just giving a little bit of an example with the first Doctor. Along the sides here we do get a little bit of information generally about the costume itself so Grain of Terror. The Doctor's sash signifies the Doctor's official position as the regional officer of the provinces which I really do like that. It gives a little bit of an insight once again into the story and considering this is probably aimed at a younger audience having unusual facts in there literally about a over 50 year old program is very good. I like that and in fact I'm probably going to make the first Doctor a little bit later so I will rip him out and put him to the side. There we go. That's him ripped out. We'll be taking a look at him in a little bit. Of course, I'm not going to be making every single character in this review, but I will give a little bit of a brief flick through some of my favourites, or at least some of the Doctors even. So we have a little bit about the second Doctor here, as you can see. A few interesting costume designs, such as, say, one from, I do believe, uh, the Underwater Menace, right, I can remember. And then a little sash as well from the Underwater Menace, that infamous Yeti coat in there as well. The third Doctor has definitely gone with a more exciting design. I love the way they've gone a bit comedic, of course, having the thing where he disguised. I have the fourth Doctor. Again, it's lovely to see the Talons of Wang Chiang costume as well as his standard one and the burgundy one, so that's nice to see. The fifth Doctor has a few interesting versions. And then, of course, we have the best Doctor of them all, Mr. Colin Baker. Whoop, whoop, yay. He's brilliant once again. I think that he is pretty much down to the T for this release. His costume's absolutely wonderful. He fits this release so well. I could imagine kids would probably like cutting this one out because of the sheer colour and design. I love the fact that they've gone for the standard sixth Doctor here from his first season in 1984, of course, from the Two Doctors and the Twin Dilemma and things like that. I do believe that is from the Two Doctors, but it claims it's from the Twin Dilemma. I don't know. They also have a lovely little image here, which is what I really do like. You can fix this over the top and then have the longer Afro Colin from Trial of Time Lord. Excellent. I wish we could have that in the actual figures from character options. Wouldn't that be good? We also have the Seventh Doctor in there as well. The Eighth Doctor, both from the movie and the Night of the Doctor. Would have been lovely to see the Dark Eyes costume from Big Finish. That would have been great. And then as well, we just have a few more Doctors in there. No War Doctor. How sad. Fourth Doctor there. With his many different costume designs and his lovely hair, which definitely if I was to cut this out, I would have the longer hair rather than the shorter Series 8 one. Skipping forward a few pages and picking out a few of the other characters as examples. As you can see, we have Ace here. Once again, a very good character costume to actually have in this book so a very good choice and to see some classic companions in there and of course no doubt probably one of the main ideas of why this book was in fact also released we have the many different variations of Bill Potts from series 10 so once again a very good costume that Bill had throughout series 10 we have many different versions we have the original one that I do believe that she had in the pilot from what I can remember I don't know it might send little quotes up there we have the one from Smile as well the denim jacket and the one from the I do believe a brief scene in the pilot as well so a very good character to have them and then the final character that I'm going to pick on for this release is Rose Tyler. We have quite a lot of different variations, in fact, of her costume. It is nice to see that they've not gone with the generic one. It would have been very easy to go with the New Earth one that has been used quite a lot in merchandise. It's nice to see that they've gone with the one from Tooth and Claw. Of course, the denim one with a little bit of facts once again about that costume, as well as the one from The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. I've noticed that that one seems to be slipping into media a little bit more these days, such as the Funko Pop and the Titan that have been released in that costume. And then we have the one that no doubt will never be seen in any other piece of merchandise. It is, of course, the one from the Idiot's Lantern. Very 1950s looking, so that is very nice. And that is all that I'm going to go through character-wise for this one. I'm now going to pick out some characters to cut out. So the characters that I've decided to cut out for the purposes of this review, we already decided that I'm going to be cutting out the first Doctor. When I said we, I mean me. But yeah, the other character that I decided to cut out, I thought would be best to go with a companion. So I decided to go with Joe Grant because she has a few interesting costumes and a few fun designs in there, as you can see, as well as a lot of facts. So yeah, Katie Manning is a very good actor and a very lovely person as well. And I was a little bit undecided of what other person to go for because I don't really have a favourite Doctor and I don't really think any other Doctor really stands out to me. So I just decided to go with the sixth Doctor, Colin Baker, because, you know, I don't really know why. I really don't. He's just one of those ones, isn't he, that everybody loves, including me, probably more so than anyone. The other things that you may need for this is of course some scissors unless you're magic and you can just cut this out with the click of your fingers which I unfortunately can't and then you may also want some print sticks just in case you want to go into the other costumes on top and actually want to keep it secure so you may want that one. You may also want a cup of tea as well just in case you know you're very tired like me it's quite early in the morning and that's not even tea that's coffee by the way. 
a very strong coffee. Exciting it would be to watch me cut all of these out completely for the next half an hour. I'm not going to put you through that misery and I'm just going to cut them out myself as I don't really need to do a step-by-step -step guide because I'm presuming you all have the intelligence to work out how all of these go together but I'll probably show you a little bit of a progression all the way through when I find something exciting like when I've cut out the head or something like that. I don't particularly know but have some progress. Yay! Although I've already decided this is literally the only bit that I've done so far and I would just like to say if you are a parent and you're planning on buying this for your child be warned you're probably going to need to cut some of this out especially the heads and the small parts because it is surprisingly a little bit fiddly and I definitely want to say it is definitely for the youngish audience I'd say maybe a medium age I'd like to do this to be a little bit more pop outy style but then again probably all the parts would have fell out in the shop by that point so I do understand why they've done it in this way but just saying be warned parents you're probably going to need to cut some of this out for your kids and we have some success I finally have all of the parts cut out so basically every figure has a base mold like this pretty much can you call it a mold probably not but you know it's got this sort of odd base piece at the bottom which of course you fold so the way that I'm going to do that I'm going to do it a little bit of a technical way but hey I'm going to whack on my Winston Churchill ruler yay basically I'm just going to score down the sides using some scissors probably incredibly unsafe do not do this at home if you actually want to keep your fingers but there we go could probably use some better scissors to be honest don't know where the decent ones have gone there we go just popping that like that and then that means that it should hopefully as you can see slide in nicely and there you go you've got them all nice and straight straightly folded and then i believe this should now just stand up as so woohoo we have a functioning william hartnell because I was talking about the Reign of Terror earlier, and it's one of my favourite stories, to be quite honest, from the classic era, I absolutely love it. I'm going to go with that costume, and he's just going to slide over the top, as you can see. However, you fell over. Go there. Naughty. You to just slide on, and then, of course, you fold it around as so, obviously. This isn't exactly rocket science, is it? Anybody on the planet can do it. There we go. Well, in his costume from the Reign of Terror, and then of course I'm going to put on that as well, the hat, which in fact also has a little bit of a cut on, because I sneezed whilst cutting it out, therefore it kind of went like that. So then we have finally Hartnell as seen in the Reign of Terror. Now I quite like the way the costumes have been done, because obviously it's not the most complicated design in the world, it is quite simplistic, uses a lot of block colour, because it is meant to appeal to the slightly younger audience, and I think the way that it has been done, it's simplistic, however you can still rely on it as a pretty accurate version of the costume. I think that you can obviously tell, if you're a classic fan you know what episode it is from because it is a very standout costume yeah i do believe that this is the one from an unearthly child or whatever other story he had with the cape and things i'm pretty sure that is but yeah you can tell just where the, the um, waistcoat has a little bit of patting on and then the different checkered trousers and things i think that is good attention to detail as you can see just sliding that out a little bit the trousers underneath on the original version are in fact slightly different to this one here much like how they were in the actual story so just giving you an idea there you go there's that version of the top. You have multiple heads as well. You have the hat to match, in fact. So, if anything, you could probably just slide that over the top as so if you sort of glued it in a certain manner. Then you could have several different versions of William Hartnell and you could sort of make your own bases. And then moving on to the Joe Grant paper doll now, the only companion that I decided to cut out because I do quite like Joe Grant. I think that she's a really good companion. So, to start off with the base, I do believe is a Green Death costume, if I can remember. This is the point of what I was saying in the actual book itself. It would have been nice to have an actual page that you can keep as an actual book because once you've cut it out even though they've got all notes around the edges it kind of gets a little bit confusing and everything so just small pieces of paper well card i guess to an extent so yeah it would have been nice to have at least a page in the booklet to have all the information in a really nice and rather smiley joe grant face there with a very nice costume once again very nicely checkered the doctor's one which is also on the figure behind as you can see in the very nice iconic -y fur jacket and the blue sort of dress thing from the one from the curse of peladon for what i can remember rightly it's a rather odd one very 1970s once again well with the curly head as you can see with the curly hair there you can have your very own peladon joe from that lovely story with alpha centauri and there we have it there is joe grant from the three doctors looking rather furry in her blue very 70s coat once again a similar thing for the hartnell figure it is a rather simple design idea however i can obviously tell it looks like katie manning to be quite honest they've got the likeness pretty well i think the smile and the very sort of rather large cheeks definitely suits katie manning and then of course we've got the peladon version as well which I've just sort of glued together briefly at the back there. It needs to be held up.
up on the actual glue stick behind. But yeah, there we go. That's just to give an idea of what that costume would look like on the actual figure as well. So getting the best to last, of course, it is time for the sixth Doctor, Mr. Colin Baker. Now, Ben Morris has done an absolutely excellent job, to be honest, at recreating his costume. He probably would have been one of the most challenging. As you can see, he's done a really good job of replicating the waistcoat and the cravat and even the tiny little cat badge. Of course, I have the Trial of the Time Lord Terror of the Vervoids version. You have the Revelation of the Daleks Morning Cloak in there as well, along with the standard first season Sixth Doctor waistcoat and trousers in there as well. And then what is a really nice touch, we also have the actual Colin figure underneath, which is the base version, which is him just wearing his waistcoat in holiday mode Colin, I like to call it. I do believe from the two Doctors, as well as the addition of the smaller Afro Colin head, of course, on the actual version. And as you can see, Mini Colin is, of course, supporting the large Afro because he does have a large Afro himself. But you have it, the Sixth Doctor in his Revelation morning robes. Now, to be quite honest, I love all the costume choices for this Doctor, actually, because I've gone with some really interesting variants. I love that they've used the Revelation morning robe, and I've not, in fact, glued that on because I also really like the addition underneath of the smaller waistcoat version as well. I just also like the really concerned looking head that we have going on with Colin here. Once again, very, very sort of relevant and captures this Doctor very well. And then, of course, just because I absolutely adore Sixie, I've gone and made my own little Trial of a Time Lord Colin. All I've done with this one is I've, in fact, just cut off all of the flaps because, of course, no stand at the back of this. And then I've gone and sort of done a little cut towards the top of the head and then just glued that on as so. In fact, using one of the other pieces of card that was left over from one of the previous ones to create just this little cutout Colin, which doesn't stand up by himself, unfortunately, but I could just make a little base like that at the bottom. And then he can stand up wherever he wants loving life. We have the three Colin Bakers to Together. What a lovely, lovely sight indeed. So overall for Doctor Who Paper Dolls, this has been a rather unusual book review because it's kind of ending like a little bit of a product review really because it technically is. It's more an activity book than an actual physical book to read. As I say, I have brought up a few problems in this review, such as it would be really nice that once you've made all the figures, at the very end of it, you would have an actual book left over that says about the costumes, says about the different people that designed them and the different elements that made the costume and how it sort of started in design and then went all the way through to the final product that we've seen in the TV show itself. But overall, something I've noticed from doing this, if anything, you're paying for the actual time that it takes to make them. And I guess it would be really nice to sit down on an evening and literally, if you want something to relax, literally doing this. Like generally, by filming this review and going off and then needing to make them, then coming back, saying what I've done, showing them and sort of putting all the costumes together, it has sort of been a little bit relaxing. So if you just want something generally to do in your spare time, then this is sort of something for you. It's not absolutely amazing because, as you can see, it, they are literally just made of paper or technically colour card. The sort of well constructed, the flaps can be a little bit annoying when it comes to putting them together, can sometimes come off. You do definitely probably need glue for this to be quite honest because I thought that it may have just slotted together beforehand, but it turns out not. It turns out that you probably need glue to fit it all together. But yeah, generally they're a nice little thing. They're not exactly that expensive. As I say, they're literally just paper and they probably will fall over at some point. They're just sort of a nice little novelty thing that generally is nice for younger fans as well, although the very younger fans will need help probably to cut them out as I did think that there may have been a pop-outable thing from the card. It turns out that you do need to cut out every single thing manually by yourself. So yeah, generally, it's a nice little thing. If you know a Doctor Who fan of the classic series and the new series, generally quite a lot of people will probably get something out of this because there is a lot of different costume variations, as I say, from both classic series and new Who in there. So generally, it's sort of a little novelty thing, really, isn't it? And it kind of looks cool, but it won't be everybody's cup of tea. Thanks for watching this review. I'm going to finish by cutting out some more paper dolls whilst drinking a cup of coffee. I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.